the water processing module that I've been working on for the last year. You can see it here. We have it up on the table where we've been doing mechanical buildup. Water processing module uh, is essentially just a water electrolysis system, which we can use for several different ISRU uh, systems. And any different type of ISRU system that produces water, um, we can then break that water into its constituents of hydrogen gas and oxygen gas using water electrolysis. The water electrolysis stacks you can see here are central, um, and they don't function just by themselves, unfortunately. They need several ancillary components to work properly, as well as we have to produce gases that are at the right purity standard um, for any downstream customers. So they're, because of those two reasons, we have a whole lot of components that are included in the balance of plan for the module. We are, we here at JSC do design, build, and test of ISRU systems. So this started out as a design. Uh, when the design went through several design reviews, we purchased all the parts, and then we proceeded to the mechanical buildup. The mechanical buildup is now done, which you can see here. Uh, we are moving next to the electrical buildup. The electrical box will go right here, and that's going to comprise all of the needed components to take the power quality um, safely to all of the components requiring power. After we put in the electrical box, we're going to move forward to work doing uh, test readiness reviews, all those kind of things, safety reviews, and then we are going to do standalone testing of the module. After we do standalone testing, we will integrate it with various ISRU systems. I can walk you through uh, the large components of it so you get a good understanding of it. Like I said, these are the electrolysis stacks. We have two of them. Uh, they are each 12-cell uh, proton exchange membrane, and we're using them in the liquid anode feed configuration rather than cathode feed. We have all of the components needed for the water management system. So we have deionization beds that are used to keep the water quality at what's required for the electrolysis stacks. So the, we have to have water that is a certain resistivity so that we're not conducting electricity anywhere else other than right here at the electrolysis stacks. We have flow meters, different instrumentation to make sure that everything's going on the way that it's supposed to go on. Over here we have pumps to move the water at the required uh, flow rate that is needed for the electrolysis stacks, and that's there because we need to have a certain amount of water coverage across the cells. We want to make sure that the cell membranes aren't drying out, uh, things like that. We also incorporated within the water management uh, system for the electrolysis stacks a thermal control system. So you can see here in the back we have heat exchangers, um, and we will eventually be putting heaters on the separator tanks here, which hold the water as well. The electrolysis stacks operate at a, uh, they are the most optimal and most efficient at a certain temperature. So we want to make sure that we can get the water up to that temperature as fast as possible and then maintain that temperature. So that's why those components are there. This system specifically um, was designed to produce propellants. So the oxygen that's going to be produced is going to be using going to oxygen storage, and the hydrogen that's being produced is going to go to a metal hydrate storage. So each of those things have a certain specification for purity and the sense of water content. So we have two drying sections. This section right here is the hydrogen drying section. Uh, so these are two essential uh, desiccant beds that we're going to use to dry the gas before it goes to its downstream customer. Over here is the oxygen drying section, and it's going to be similar desiccant beds, but it's going to be a regenerable desiccant bed, um, which means at some point we will be regenerating that bed and removing the water vapor that's been absorbed. And we're going to do that via sweet gas and heat. So these beds, these desiccant beds have an internal uh, cartridge heater. How much water can it produce or electrolyze? This, uh, both stacks combined can electrolyze up to 700 grams per hour of water. Are there any terrestrial applications for this? We use water electrolysis systems all the time in terrestrial applications. What's slightly different about this is that we're actually using both gases, oxygen and hydrogen. Usually, and what we see here on Earth where we use electrolysis stacks, you're only using one of the product gases. So that makes this design uh, more dif uh, different than what you would see usually. Would you be able to use this on the moon, Mars? Asteroid? Water electrolysis systems, uh, every different extraterrestrial body you look at, you're going to be generating water somehow. Um, whether that's through using hydrogen reduction with regolith on the moon or Mars, or simply baking water out of the Martian regolith, uh, you will be, you will need a well of water electrolysis system. And the same for an asteroid. So this is a universal system. And this is actually the second generation design. 
Um, so we tried to move more toward a flight light design that you could use on an extraterrestrial body. So it's got several improvements. It's got a higher production rate um, with these stacks than we've had on the previous module. We got rid of some of the consumables, since we are not going to be able to have consumables if we actually did take an ISRD uh, mission somewhere. So we want everything to be gravity independent, as little consumables as possible. So that's, we tried to make some improvements in this design for the previous. But we need water electrolysis systems for all ISRD designs. So 